The next type of isomer is going to be a conformational isomer. Conformational isomers have the same molecular formula and bond connectivity, but differ by bond rotation. So what we're going to see here is we're going to see carbon-carbon single bonds being able to rotate. The most common examples in organic chemistry are alkanes, the carbon-carbon single bond. And they're shown using Newman projections or Fischer projections, with Newman projections being by far the most common and useful. Now here I've shown a few different types of conformational isomers. They're a little bit tricky because they're not both drawn in the same way. But the idea here is that what we're showing is rotation about the carbon-carbon single bond, leading to two different structures. So we've got the Newman projection versus the straight line formula. And you'll notice that this is resultant from rotation about the carbon-carbon single bond here. We typically show this type of arrow to denote that sort of rotation. And the same goes for the other structure. Now, when we unwind this structure here, if I was to take this Newman projection, the methyl group would be down, and then I'd have two carbons, and then this methyl group in the back here would be here. Then you'll notice that in one of these structures, I have the chlorine atom, which is on the front carbon on the right-hand side. That says to me that it's coming out of the page like so, and this here, hydrogen is going back, and here I have the OH group going back, and I have the hydrogen coming forward. Now, if I was to rotate this carbon-carbon bond here, that would change where all the groups are and give different conformational isomers. Now, conformational isomers are just the same molecule with rotation around the bond. And here we've given some tricky examples with some rotation, but the most common scenarios for these type of isomers that you're going to see is going to be cyclohexane rings, which we're going to talk about in the carbohydrate section, and energetics, which I'm about to talk about now. So let's talk about the energetics of conformational isomers. So here we're talking about relative energetics. There's not going to be a calculation that you need to do here. There's not going to be numbers you need to have memorized. You're just going to need to understand a couple key points. We're going to look at butane as an example. Butane is a four carbon chain. When we look at the Newman projection for butane, we've got two different structures that we can draw. We have structures one through th one, three, and five, and structures two, four, and six. Now one, three, and five are what we call staggered. And that means that the groups in the front and the groups in the back are 60 degrees apart from each other. Groups two, four, and six are called eclipsed. And that means all the groups are actually sitting right on top of each other. So we have these groups sitting right on top. Now it's hard for us to draw that, so you'll notice that they're offset just a little bit. That's a communication tool more than anything. These groups do have zero degrees apart from each other. Now what you need to know is you need to know that the staggered conformation is lower energy. So here you'll notice they're down here in these wells. And you'll notice that two, four, and six are maxima. They're higher energy. And this is due to something called steric repulsion. Steric repulsion is a result of physical space occupation. So these are groups physically occupying the same space. When we have groups sitting on top of each other, they repel each other because they are occupying the same space. And that's why these are higher energy configurations. When groups are apart from each other, that gives them a little bit more real estate, a little bit more breathing room, and thus lowers the energy. Now it's worth noting that when we have big groups, for example, two methyl groups, I can have them 180 degrees apart like so, or I can have them 60 degrees apart like so. When I have them 180 degrees apart, this is called the anti-configuration. Now anti is when they are as far apart as they can possibly be, and this will be the absolute lowest energy. 
and I can have these two groups 60 degrees apart from each other. This is called gauche, and this is lower energy, but not as low energy as the ante. It's also worth noting that when we're thinking about the absolute highest energy configuration for the eclipsed, we'll see that when the two large groups are sitting right on top of each other. So group number two, as I've drawn here, would have the highest energy. Now the take home message from all of this here is that when groups are staggered, they're lower energy. And when big groups are anti, that's the lowest energy. When groups are eclipsed, that's higher energy. And when the two big groups are sitting on top of each other, that's going to be the highest energy. Now, the important thing to take away is when will these be found? Because carbon-carbon single bonds are freely rotating as long as we're above zero degrees Kelvin. At low temperatures, you're likely to find the most stable conformation. And at high temperatures, you're likely to find the least stable conformation. So conformational isomers can be seen with these bond rotations in these Newman projections. We'll also get to revisit these when we talk about cyclohexane rings, when we talk about the cyclization of sugars.